to St. Mary's for a Northern California stop on this trip. Pretty good road trip. St. Mary's, Fullerton, and now USC. Should be a good game tonight. I'm looking forward to this, seeing USC for the first time. Thing about Vermont, scouting report on them, JB, is they're not going to beat themselves. Discipline, execute, five out mostly. They're not real big. As USC goes into Morgan early. Kobe Johnson caught up in no man's land. Decided to fling it to the rim. Vermont gets the first board with Robin Duncan. Vermont's not going to be down tempo. They will run on turnovers and long rebounds, but they are going to execute in the half court. Shoot a lot of threes. Dylan Penn with the basketball. In the backcourt, deflected, so it's okay to pick up. Aaron Deloney now, who opened with a career-high 32 to beat Brown. Fiorillo gathers his own. Well, the initial block by Morgan closing all the way out to the three-point line. That's his 11th block already at the start of this third game. He is a big-time paint presence rim protector here early for USC, getting a much bigger role this year on this USC team, Morgan is. And now takes a shot at the offensive end. The Trojans should have a decided size advantage throughout their rotation tonight. Just to underscore the point about how consistently Vermont has contended for league championships and playing deep into March. Because of their success, JB, I think they do really well in the transfer portal. Guys where it doesn't work out somewhere else would like to go play at a place like Vermont that wins so often. Finn Sullivan, a good example of that, perhaps, after finishing at San Diego. Drew Peterson, misfiring. USC still looking for its first field. That's where Peterson likes to operate, just didn't get that one to go down, but very good in that mid-post area. Deloney, one and done for the Catamounts. Peterson will bring it himself. One other issue here early for USC is rebounding. When Morgan's off the floor and they go smaller, they haven't rebounded it as well as they probably will. So a point of emphasis in practice the last week is getting all fives to go to the defensive board. He sticks in waters with another misfire. Fiorillo puts it down. No whistle. You just see how much Morgan affects shots. Boogie. The back iron. It's not going down right now. They've got some good looks. Just haven't gone in. Shot selection was a bit of an issue against Florida Gulf Coast. Through contact and finishing with a flick of the wrist, Nick Fiorillo. Fiorillo looking to attack here early. Got Dixon Waters on him. Redshirt Jr. just granted a scholarship this offseason. Now he's in the starting lineup. You can see the spacing of Vermont very good here early. Mentioned the five out. They want to keep that painted area open. So when guys close out, they can rip it down and get into that paint. Trojans start 0 of 5 from the floor. Morgan looking into Peterson. Drew Peterson, a captain, falling away. And there's the first hoop for USC. Turns his back to defenders because of the size. He is a guard, but all is 6'8". Smaller guards can't get to his release point, especially if he fades away like he did on that one. USC's got to be disciplined defensively tonight. Can't bail them out late clock with fouls. They're doing a pretty good job here early on their defensive board. Another empty possession for the Catamounts. Here's Ellis. Morgan missed it all. Off balance. Not a great shot for Morgan there. Penn with a no-look pass. Hey, look at that pass. Zinging around the perimeter. That's just good offense. Didn't go down, but two extra passes on that one. Got a wide open three in the corner. That last attempt might get Josh Morgan some, some rest on the sideline. Foul away from the basketball. Goes against Aaron Deloney. He wants the deep post. I, I would prefer him to go quick there. Just catch it and score. Takes his time. You hit, 
and then fade away knowing no guard is getting to that shot and he's proven he did last year he's pretty consistent at making that shot meantime that was the second foul on the American East sixth man of the year Aaron Deloney now in the starting lineup so he heads to the bench less than four minutes in Peterson. Again. Good check out and rebound for Duncan when you turn your back to defenders for most players It's a lot easier to come back to the right shoulder versus turning in over the left shoulder that time Peterson went left shoulder didn't make it Much easier shot to go over your right shoulder Ben Sullivan turns down the three a dozen left on the timer for Robin Duncan and the Catamounts Well, you can see Vermont's dictating how this game's going to be played here early Dylan you pen to the lane Wanted the foul. They're gonna use clock and make you defend Speaking of defending they've held USC to one of eight shooting and only a bucket through our first section Back see how you have to rotate in the air to make that shot and a lot of times you take your eyes off the target So going right shoulder fade much easier for most players than it is left shoulder turning into the defender The visiting Catamounts with Robin Duncan sending it in with the early advantage continuing their West Coast road swing Can't fault the effort from USC early. They just can't get anything to go down on the offensive end and Vermont's only got four points in the first five or so minutes too. But Yellis made Dylan Penn miss Johnny Wright, a freshman, is in the game in the front court along with Trey White from Dallas, also a first year Trojan. Here he is. I guess you could say one thing the ball hasn't moved as much as maybe you would like here early for USC. A lot of dribbling, but it's not like they're taking bad shots. Maybe Morgan shot, but other than that, they've got some decent looks. First personal foul on Robin Duncan, third on the team as Reese Dixon Waters, a third year sophomore from Long Beach, drove it. An area USC is consistently good with their restarts after timeout, baseline inbound. Yeah. Like a direct entry there to Dixon Waters, just holding his guy off. Couldn't jam it in there. Sam Alamutu, a redshirt freshman from Ontario. End of the game for John Becker and Vermont. From Burlington, a record of one and two so far. They lost two-time America East player of the year, Ryan Davis, and went to eight new scholarship players this year. It's interesting when you look at these mid-majors and what they do in their non-conference scheduling. A lot of this is to fund their program. If they make money as Dixon Waters knocks down the three, much needed three. But a team like Vermont's got to come out here and get three games to help keep their program going. This part of part of the world of mid-major college basketball. TJ Hurley throws it away. The freshman, no relation to the Hurley basketball tree. Good find by Peterson. Could have taken it himself like he's been doing, but the unselfish play to the corner. We were talking about that last night with Norfolk State. The scheduling, they've gotten so good that nobody wants to play them. I think Vermont kind of falls into that same category a little bit. Well, even if UCLA was reluctant, they put a 30-point win on Norfolk State last night as Dixon Waters touches this time. That's the thing. Just pass. If you're off balance and it's going to be a wild shot, pass it and keep the offense going. It's not like the shot clock was running down there. Kind of the theme for this USC team early is ball movement to get better shots. Cam Gibson hits from the baseline. Gibson, a fifth year player by way of Western Carolina. They're hopeful that he's put a history of some knee injuries behind him. Again, the USC will play through Peterson with his back to the basket. Nice cut by Trey yeah, White cut from the lane. He scores it. It looks like JB to me This is our first time seeing them live that they're gonna run a lot of this offense through Peterson on that block Mentioned we they've always they 
for the last six, seven years, they've had good bigs, good scoring bigs. And they don't have one, so let's use Peterson in that role. So far this season, averaging six assists, but also turning it over four and a half times per game through two contests. You hope that that'll clean itself up the more it goes along. But a good passer. Got to be a risk reward kind of thing, though. Three sticks and waters with the foul there. One element that I've always appreciated about USC's offense is not only having one big, but having a pair of front court players who can pick and pop and who also can high, low enter as well as any college basketball team I watch. They, they I don't have a percentage on it, but the amount of high, low action they've done the last six, seven years is a lot. And just don't have the personnel for it this year, at least not yet. Finn Sullivan, a Southern California product. Preseason all-conference along with Dylan Penn. His coach said he's the best defender in the America East. Let's see who he sticks with. Probably Ellis most of the night. Ellis had a look at Kajani Wright. Couldn't get the pass there. I always wonder, you know, and this is this team has basically dominated the America East for the last six years. I always wonder when we get these teams from different conferences what the talent level is like and what it looks like. And obviously, they're not big, but they all kind of look the same. And, I'm, and I would imagine most of these guys can shoot. So it's execution, running sharp offense, and then knocking down shots. Dixon Waters rising for three. His second of the night. Three balls off the bounce, much more difficult than the catch and shoot. It came off that screen clean, knocked it down. Now Cam Gibson can't find the answer. All Trojans there for the rebound. Trey White on the move. Boogie missed time to jump, able to save the possession. Good idea by White. Got to flex it out. Yeah, the officials didn't see it that way. White's pleading his case. For now, it's Vermont basketball. They're waiting for us, Don? Tell them to go ahead. Are they waiting for us? They thought you had another point to make. <laughs> they ain't waiting on me. I'm telling you, after stoppages and from the baseline, USC is among the best programs in the country. Uh, Dixon Waters being featured more this year. We opened the show talking about Ellis and Peterson, but nine points a game in the first two. It seems like they're going to him a little more. That's a baseline out of bounds to get him ISO'd at the elbow. Puts it down and gets the and one. The continuation, Don, of the way he finished last year, asserted himself more and more mm -hmm. in February and March. He missed the Pac-12 semi against UCLA with a hip, came back in the NCAA tournament, scored a career high 16, 14 of which came in the second half. Ellis had 27 in that semifinal. See how the floor spread? USC's got to do a better job of keeping guys in front. They want to spread you out because the scouting report says they can shoot. But when the floor spread like that and their spacing's good, how much room they have to drive. Get a look and a listen to the Malik Thomas collision that will send Finn Sullivan to the foul line. Thomas shouldn't just let him go. He was really late on that rotation. Team not going to beat themselves. USC is going to have to take this one. Offense starting to, to go a little bit now for USC, starting to make some shots. Down in the half court, USC plays through Peterson, creating his own. There's that left shoulder again. 
such a more difficult shot when you have to adjust for the rotation and then finding your target. Whereas that elbow is already locked on the right shoulder release. Sullivan yeah. looking opposite. Duncan couldn't pay it off for him. Peterson had the rebound tipped away, but USC will get it. Well, you see, with no Josh Morgan on the floor, SC not real big. To Johnny Wright, maybe Drew Peterson, their biggest player right now. All five got to get back in there and rebound. Got to spend some time with Kajani right this spring. Came out and worked with our pre-draft guys for a few weeks. Great kid. Going to have a really good career here at UCLA, USC like a lot of freshmen. Figuring some stuff out, but has some physical tools. Strong, bouncy. Just getting going here for USC. Dixon Waters lost the handle. Peterson trying to retrieve it. Catamounts have it wrapped up. And on the arrow, they'll get the possession. To the Robin Duncan, a fifth year from Evansville, Indiana, and a Duncan has been on the court for Vermont for the last eight seasons. His brothers Ernie and Everett, they were the first trio of brothers to play in an NCAA tournament. Is that right? Interesting that they've brought Deloney back in. He's playing with two personal fouls. Midway point, first half. Then Sullivan draws front iron. You're Thomas left alone. Couldn't hit it. You're so used to watching. We've been conditioned watching USC the last few years of bigs running and then them getting out in transition and throwing it in early. Just really not an option for USC this year. As a result, a lot of those three-point looks come inside yeah. out with shoulders That's square. Right. It's just yep. a, a different passing pattern mm -hmm. as they settle in their new offensive scheme. And those plays that may have looked more like a travel than it actually was for Boogie Ellis. He's in disbelief. There's a lot going on there on the catch. You can just tell, and it's only been 10 or so minutes, you can just tell that this team is still trying to figure out offense right now. That's what this time of the year is for. When you're relying on a, a lot of young guys, you have to live with this to a certain degree. I like what they've done with the travel and the enforcement, right? It's become more lenient. The benefit of the doubt belongs to the ball handler, but in situations like that, can't abuse the privilege, I guess. It's kind of what it feels like in translation. Well, really, they, they, the Euro step is what that interpretation was for. Like, they weren't going to call it if you tried to step through but something like that where you, you kind of gain an advantage on a quick rip pretty much have to call that one Peterson now exploring off the bounce tend to shoot for the Trojans Over the top Thomas in trouble Can he find a shot instead of turnover? Yeah, it's just out of sync a lot of dribbling early in the possession then the clock gets late your spacing's not great. Guys are just unsure right now a little bit. But they got good players, USC. I don't think this is here to stay. And Thomas said he's out for one of those players, who you'll see in a moment. Isaiah Sellers is a freshman from Hayward, California, and to a person, the Trojan will tell you he is their best shooter. Hasn't found it yet, but when he does, that could open up some of what's troubling them. All it takes is one. Sometimes one make, one half, one game. To get a guy confident. Over the top with touch, Dylan Penn. Game high 27 in Sunday's double overtime loss at Fullerton. Boogie. Nice. Came to a jump stop. Two foot floater game avoids the offensive foul. And now a baseline pass intercepted by Peterson, and that's huge. Aaron Deloney's third foul. The Portland, Oregon product. Well, he's got to be smarter than that. You can't be reaching for loose balls or trying to strip a guy when you already got two fouled. Big mistake there. So their leading score on the season done for the final 8-14 of this half, you would assume. I mean, 94 feet from the basket. At the other end, you just you can't afford that when you got two fouls and you're a key guy. Let's 
see where they go here at USC. The 16 foul on Vermont, so USC closing in on the penalty. First on Fiorillo. If you're struggling from the floor, drive your way to the foul line and see if you can't create some separation. Well, USC, it's only a two-game sample shooting 64%. If this is the best shooting team that USC's had in a while, you would expect their free throw percentage to go up this year, too. Morgan with a short clock. Got to go. Drew Iron, no bucket. Duncan pulls it for Vermont. Not only the spacing with Vermont, JB, they do a good job of getting it from one side of the court to the other. Really get that defense moving. You're going to call that a kick on Peterson. He thought he had his foot down. Uh, Boogie Ellis can get his own, no doubt, and they're going to need As he will break the huddle with Cody Johnson, playing with Oziah Sellers and Boogie Ellis in the backcourt. Drew Peterson and Joshua Morgan, the starters up front. Six field goals apiece. The entire game played within two possessions so far. Out of the stoppage. Fiorillo sends it around the perimeter. Single digits left to shoot for Cam Gibson, a fifth-year senior. Rejects the screen. Finds Hurley. T.J. Hurley, no. And a flop is called on Kobe Johnson. So this occurs away from the basketball. I see. Trying to take the charge on the drive of Gibson. So it's a class B technical, a foul shot for Hurley, the freshman. And USC gets it back at the point of interruption. On that last possession, JB, Vermont out of the sideline, out of bounds. It was a design post up for Penn. This is kind of what I'm seeing with USC. It was for him to score. He didn't like it. He kicked it out, and they got a shot from three. You don't have to score just because they threw it into you. If you don't like it, you're off balance. You don't think you can get a quality shot. Kick it out and keep running offense. <laughs> I like to look for Boogie Ellis to get Morgan going to the rim, trying to get him started offensively. And he'll get foul shots. 17 foul on Vermont. Now two of five at the strike on the season. There's another game going on in Corvallis. Oregon State's leading. Who's this, Don? Bushnell. Oh. Used to be Northwest Christian, which is in Eugene, right next to the University of Oregon campus. Great to see Oregon State. We don't, you know, it's early, but the way last season started for them and kind of continued, nice to see them winning games early. The big opening night comeback against Tulsa. Yeah. Right? Here's your Pac-12 Now app if you're interested in the Bees. Here's Penn spinning out of the lane. Andy Enfield didn't like what he saw there. He's USC strong, a little full court pressure on Vermont. Penn. Try to shot put it to the rim. Here's Sellers on the move with Peterson trailing. See, those are the passes Peterson's got a holster. He's a good passer, but there was no, I mean, that was threading the needle on that one. Lucky it wasn't a turnover. USC tried to pick up the defense a little bit, maybe get this game going a little faster, which would favor them in their uh, athleticism. Perry Smith Jr. with the basketball. Sets up Gibson. Fouled by Boogie Ellis for three. Take a look. Yeah, hit him on the elbow. I said this the other night, JB. Was that with you? Talking about closing out defending. It's almost impossible to block someone's jump shot if you're of equal size without fouling. So you close out. Is a hard closeout really going to make a miss worth the risk of potentially fouling him? Stay on your feet, close out, get a hand up. They make it, they make it. 
But you see way too many times guys lunging at shots thinking they're gonna block it without fouling them And not only do they not block it, they foul them uh, Peterson will leave and he's replaced by Reese Dixon water kind of consecutive sequences Don where the two upperclassmen you're looking for decision-making and leadership mm -hmm. have missteps and Vermont has a chance to recapture the lead Oh, it's early, but again, I said it. They, there's too much talent on this USC roster for them not to figure it out at some point. It may take a little longer than people thought. Uh, Bogey did not get rewarded for attacking there. Vermont apparently defending cleanly. Gibson from the baseline. Neither team just in any sort of flow offensively whatsoever. And Johnson misses another. But a little in pit. Last two, Boogie tried to force the issue, didn't get the call. Early three for Kobe Johnson. The ball movement that we're talking about. Get better shots, make the defense work. It's identical 6 of 20, 30% shooting from the floor for Vermont USC until that Finn Sullivan miss. Boogie spins away from two catamounts on the baseline. Now Sellers. USC has done a good job of guarding without fouling. I will say that. Only four team fouls here. We got four and a half to go in the half. Johnson slips. I think Andy Enfield wanted a timeout instead, a I, turnover. I thought that too, JB. I think he was saying thumb out. Uh, calling it's a play call. Or maybe he was saying timeout. You might be right. He just called one. If he wasn't initially, that's the story we're going. <laughs> thumb out, timeout. Clark has been really good. Silly off to a 3-0 start now off to Las Vegas to challenge a top 25 Illinois group. Perry Smith Jr., a freshman, a three-star recruit who had SC offers, could not cap the three-point play spanning the break. So Andy Enfield and the Trojans really trying to manufacture some offensive rhythm. They go to Harrison Hornery off their bench next. Peterson, Worley, and he'll get to the foul line. You see that, though, that... The ball movement, four or five passes, and then you drive it. You can't just start a possession with driving it when the defense is set. So let's get it moving. DHO's dribble handoff, and then you can attack, which is what they did that time, and Peterson got to the line. Four-minute mark here. Probably also worth pointing out that uh, Vincent Iwuchukwu looks good. He's around the team. He's smiling, and that's great news for the heralded recruit who's supposed to be in the middle of this USC scheme. But I, I think it's... Any team that lost their their top prospect and especially in a way in which he nearly lost his life on the floor right. That had to rattle and, and disrupt what was the plan for this? Well, season. whether it rattled the team or not, which I'm sure it did they, they miss because he does what they've been doing for the last six seven years I've already talked about with Okongwu with Evan Mobley with Isaiah Mobley He would have filled that void of those guys so hopefully he comes back at some point because he was a big-time recruit and a big-time athlete. Cam Gibson stepped on the sideline right in front of the Trojans bench. John Becker can teach a scatter report, and he's got receptive pupils, though. You can tell. Yeah. I said it. They're not going to beat themselves. They're disciplined. They're going to execute. They're not going away. USC is going to have to take this one. They're going to win. Peterson shed his defender. Pass. Found Hornery. An assist. And a bucket off the bench. Just make the extra pass and make it easier on your offense. Peterson could have shot that. He maybe would have made it, but you make the extra pass and Hornery's got a wide open layup. Penn working on Wyatt. Runs into the second defender. Hornery a hoop, and now he takes a charge. Come in and affect the game. If your team's struggling offensively, give them a lift. Spark. 
performance film all you want, but you got to do it against live competition. The problem is, is you know, this is your last game before you go to the Bahamas and play some real competition. So trying to get it on the fly there may be a challenge. Are you not planning to be here with me on Friday? Oh, that's right, Friday. <laughs> I know you're sick of me. But I didn't know that. I was thinking about taking that game off. Don will be in the Bahamas while I sit here. I'm going early. And you blame me for going to the Bahamas early? <laughs> and then on the other side, league play. League play. They had to get to a 20-game league schedule, but it is it is tough on these teams, especially the young ones like USC is, to have early December two league games that really matter. Can you say the uh, inverse of that, too, for the veteran favorites like a UCLA and an Arizona who are probably ready to roll? Yeah. Pick up a, a conference win or two? So the lead with Dixon Waters at the foul line, but he leaves one there. Zone look for USC for the first time tonight. More good ball movement from the Catamount. Can they find a shot? Splitting the double. Great pass and a lay-in. A better Dylan cut Penn. by Penn. Noticing that it's a defense. Again, floor spread. Cut through. Got an easy layup. Trey White off the crossover, off the glass. No results. That's getting your own off the dribble. Tough shot. Doesn't go down. See how Vermont continues to attack this zone. Io Falia into the game for Vermont. Tough a shot. hit from Finn Sullivan. Fade away. That was his Drew Peterson impersonation. After Essie briefly took the lead, four unanswered from Vermont. Peterson to the baseline, got caught up in the air, well defended by Matt Barreto. Tried to get, get contact and get to the line. Didn't get it done. And the bucket for Penn. Barreto's a fascinating story. 24 in green. He got his degree from UConn. While away from basketball, hasn't yeah. played the last couple of seasons after averaging six points at Delaware in 2019. Dixon Waters. A foul at this end will put Peterson at the line. Too many passes on this possession and then the cut. So when you pass, you keep defenders, you keep the floor spaced. Then when you cut, it's the same thing I was saying with driving the ball, with the dribble. Then it's open, then you'll get stuff out of that. Penn really good down there, finishing for a guy that's not real big. Drew Peterson at the stripe, only three points to this day. That's his second made free throw. Five rebounds, four assists, however, for Peterson. A preview of big football game this weekend coming up at the half. Stay with us for that. Five o'clock at the Rose Bowl on Fox. A sold out Rose Bowl. A lot on the line, of course, for USC, up to seven in the CFT rankings, as we found out earlier tonight. Good defense, Trey White there. Making pen miss. They've got numbers if they hurry. Hornery stopped at the line. See, that one you like. Transition, trail three, wide open. Good shooter. Just didn't go down. They have gotten some good shots here in the first half. Did haven't been able to consistently knock down. Shooting 27% from the floor. Iofalia, too strong, able to gather his own. Now down the lane, foul by Dixon Waters. O'Leary, Iofalia. Who John Becker calls the most athletic player Vermont has. Well, the one 
thing, JB, and we haven't run into this, you and I doing games here early. It's only been a few of them. The longer you let a team like Vermont hang around in this one, the more they think they can win it. And that's the danger in putting together, you know, not a great first half as this team now believes they, they're going to win the game. Trojans found that out the hard way in opening night against Andy Andrews yep. on their program for the Gulf Coast. Final 22 seconds belong to the Trojans as they look for the last. Cam gets it back in on defense for Vermont. They can get a good possession here and go in with a bucket and grab back some of this momentum. Hornery there to screen from Peterson. Now Vermont on the counter. Ayofalia could not beat the buzzer. And it's a five-point margin after 20 minutes at the Galen Center. Not surprised. We knew the scatter report coming in. Vermont, Vermont was going to execute, pass the ball, make shots. Neither team can compare the population. 643,000 to nearly 4 million here in LA. As always, this is a David Hilton. Sounds like a place I need to move so I wouldn't have to talk to anybody. <laughs> Again, when I'm here solo on Friday, either the Bahamas or Vermont will be your destination. Yeah. Morgan had it tipped out of his hand. Where's Don? He is harvesting maple, maple syrup. Yeah. Or spearfishing down in the Bahamas. Ellis into Peterson. In all seriousness, a critical second half of basketball here for USC. I think so. You know, I think you know, they're all critical, but I think if they hadn't lost the Florida Gulf Coast, maybe it's not as critical. But to me, JB, it's not so much about the wins and losses part is the development and starting to figure out this is how we want to play. This is how we have to play. We don't have the luxury of Isaiah Mobley and Evan Mobley and Okongwu and Rakosovic and those guys anymore. So we got to get good at this, get better at it. A miss and a Morgan foul to begin their second half. Pick and pop. Miss three from Fiorillo. Boogie Ellis with just one field goal to this stage, missing a three. Wonder what Vermont's approach is now. You got a small lead. Did a good job in the in the first half of keeping USC off the board and scored enough to get the lead. But are you thinking clock? Like, are we going to make make them guard us for 30 seconds every possession? And made three there from Matt Verretto. Again, the USC defense not bad in the first half. Just not scoring enough to get the lead. Trey White, a freshman, off one foot, it spins out. Dixon Waters fouled on the putback attempts. First offensive rebound of the game, Don? What's that? First offensive rebound it is. of the game for USA? And here's what I would say. When you're struggling offensively early in the season and, and, and trying to get what the coaches are trying to get you to do, you can manufacture points. And one way to – there's a couple ways to manufacture points. Get to the foul line and get to the offensive board. And so maybe that's one area USC can attack in the second half. Is the is the is the offensive board you're bigger and you're more athletic than Vermont? And Ten of the 23 points belong to Reese Dixon Waters, who gets one out of two at the line. Saw this zone look from USC at the end of this first half. They're sticking with it here. Again, ball movement around the perimeter for the Catamounts. One and done, an empty trip. See if SC can capitalize. Screening to get Ellis to the corner. Couldn't find his shots. Over the top, Morgan. Nice catch. Couldn't pay it off. 
That was a good possession. Ball got from one side to the other. They got it inside, just didn't finish. Have to highlight the possessions again from Vermont. Only four turnovers in that first half, so denying USC an opportunity to get out in transition and get a bucket off a deflection like that. Late clock here. To the corner. Barreto just hit one. This time off balance. More good defense from USC. Penn makes good decisions when he gets in there. He doesn't force anything. If he gets down there and he can score, he will. But if not, he'll kick it out. Conversely, seven turnovers for USC. Sam Malamutu is back. Redshirt freshman. And USC up again. 2-2-1. Two, two, Trying to change the complexion of this game a little bit. I think if it stays like this, it favors Vermont. More of a half-court game. They got the lead already. She's going to try and speed it up here, I think. That doesn't mean force it. It just means try and play faster. Dixon Waters. An early three goes begging. Tip rebound controlled by Penn. I feel like Vermont's content now. Get a stop, walk it up, use some clock. This first segment, they've expanded their lead. They still have not had to utilize Aaron Deloney, who's got three fouls. There you go. This would help. Boogie between two catamounts. Couldn't find the rim. Now he's tied up. A foul. I still think this is an NCAA tournament team. It's just slow out of the gates of trying to incorporate all these new young guys is basically what it comes down to. So can you win games as you're trying to figure it out? Tied the program single season record for wins a year ago as Peterson misfires from the corner out of the stoppage. USC now one of 11 from behind the arm. Three total offensive rebounds in the game. Vermont with two, USC with one. Unusual for this late in the game. If you're a fan of boxing out, this has this been one's a game for you. For you. A clinic. Barreto has made a three in this half, missed his most recent two. Peterson running. Vermont back defensively. There's the freshman, Kajani Wright. Good interior passing, Peterson. Again, he had one of those in the first half, too. I think until you get everybody on the same page here, I, I'd be running Peterson down to that mid-block on every possession in the half court. First field goal of the night for Kajani Wright, his fourth as a Trojan. Five minutes into the second half, here is Aaron Deloney with three personal fouls. I mean, as much as a struggle as it's been, JB, they're only down five. They're down double digits here. They can string together some stops. And just do enough offensively to pull this one out. And I just said it. Early in the season, it's not going to look great, but can you win these games while you're trying to get it together? Single digits on the shot clock. Finn Sullivan off the dribble. Pass Thomas. Left it short on the rim. Malik Thomas brings it the other way. Off a couple of drag screens. Rising for three. There's an offensive board and a foul. Trey White attacking the glass. Again, again manufacturing points. Get to the offensive board. If you're not making shots, go get the misses. Third on Vermont. The foul goes against Cam Gibson. Book Yellis from the baseline on the restarts. Into Drew. Back to Boogie. Fine. There it is. Boogie Ellis and USC snap out of it. I like Peterson facilitating. Make Vermont react to him and then find guys. Boogie. 
After missing 11 of their first 12 from distance, Boogie Ellis from deep. One possession game again. Finn Sullivan flings it to the corner. Extra pass, T.J. Hurley. Really good offense. Kick out, one more pass to the top, wide open three. Some energy, some rhythm now for Thomas and USC. Peterson down the lane, tied up. And Vermont will stop it. Eight unanswered for USC, their best spurt of the night. Ignited by Drew. Coming down the last 13.43. Drew Peterson, seven points, seven rebounds, six assists so far in this one. So after Vermont opened up the largest lead of the game at eight, an 8-0 run in response from USC. This is Aaron Deloney, checked by Peterson. Gets it back. Deloney attacks to the corner. Clean three goes down for T.J. Hurley. The spacing, J.B., like drive the lane. Everyone's spaced. He could have scored it himself. Chose to kick it out to a wide open corner three. As we've harped on USC shooting. Vermont has not been that much better. They're not two of 15 from distance. Peterson loves that one-handed setup. Get it. We talked about that last night. You get it up on the window faster by not putting the second hand on it. Keep it in one hand and finish. We're going to see back to the zone defensively. Elbow entry. Robin Duncan distributing. Deloney missed. USC controls. Good tip out by Peterson there. Not allowing Vermont to get that offensive rebound. Malik Thomas has brought some energy off U.S. Yeah, he has. Hasn't made every yep. decision correctly, but he's changed the, the tenor of this game. Trey White rattles out. There's Thomas with another hand on an offensive rebound. This one's really going to come down to, and I, I haven't said this in I don't know how long, it's going to come down to who makes shots, you know? Like, which I guess every game comes down to that. But you know what I mean? When both teams aren't really making shots, who's going to make a shot to win? Not making shots and largely taking care of their possessions, too. They just need the percentages to grow. Here in Los Angeles at Galen Center, Drew Peterson and USC trying to find a way to overcome the catamounts of Vermont. USC sticking with this zone. Early drives a crease, drops it off to the baseline. That one is blocked by Wright. Good challenge by Johnny. Defense hasn't been the issue. I've been saying that all night. It's been generating enough offense. Jackson Waters, their leading scorer. He's got 10, Peterson 9. And a whistle away from the basketball. Those freedom of movement fouls on T.J. Hurley, fourth on the team, his first. Pushes the shot clock back to 20 in the half court for USC. Trey White hit a buzzer beater from just off the logo last time out. He sends it back in. Peterson falling away. He makes that shot more often than not. I think USC making a concerted effort to get to the offensive glass now, which is smart. I said it. If, if things aren't going your way from the floor, start to try and manufacture some offense. Dixon Waters for the lead. Nice. They're right about what you were saying in the first half, JB. Out of timeouts, baseline out of bounds, sideline out of bounds. They usually get a good look. That was a good look for Dixon Waters. So an offense pretty strong for Vermont. They got the shot they wanted and an offensive rebound from Perry Smith Jr. Maybe both coaches saying, let's get to the offensive board. White's crossing over. Puts it off the glass. Trey White. 
good individual offense there. Penn. That's the shot you want him taking. Reese Dixon Waters pushing with Peterson. Nearly lost the handle. It deflects to Hornery. Dixon Waters had it blocked. Finn Sullivan with a phenomenal play. Catamounts on the move. Hurley. The Fiorillo who's fouled. You see, here's the thing. USC's getting the ball down the court fast, which is what you want. Maybe look for some before the defense gets set. But then they're playing too fast in the half court. And there was still 10 on the clock when Dixon Waters rose up for that. They could get a better look than that. Sullivan dribbles into a triple. In some ways, USC fortunate that Vermont isn't shooting it at their mm -hmm. normal rate. Otherwise, this could really be in the danger zone. Dixon Waters, too strong. Missed about it all. About it. Should have shot the first one. I don't know why he turned it down, put it down one dribble. It's catch and shoot, and you were open. Sullivan that spins in Only the fourth made three of the night for the visitor. What's interesting is the USC zone is pushed out I, I think to guard the three-point line. So there shouldn't be clean looks out there Vermont getting it to Penn at the free throw line and then playing through him Inside out one possession leads continue to seesaw back and forth between Vermont and USC so that pen at the foul line, which is what a lot of teams do, put a guy there and then bring defenders to him and then kick out. But the extra the extra pass is making USC defenders chase. Good look for Sullivan there. Drew Peterson on the bench for less than a minute. He's back in for this offensive sequence. Kobe Johnson as well. Offensive foul, legal screen, Kajani Wright frustrated. Take a look. Hard to tell from that angle, but again, growing pains that we've been talking about all night. Kajani Wright, freshman, trying to find his way, got to get set on those screens. Sullivan to the corner. Catamounts on the Whoa. attack. Theofalia turned it over. And so USC with another chance to tie or take the lead. You can't get Hornery to look from the perimeter. Two-man game with Boogie Ellis. He rises for a long two. The third made field goal tonight for Boogie Ellis. We're knotted up at 38. Baseline Finn Sullivan, that's going against USC, and will send us to a stoppage. Boogie Ellis getting on track, and USC in a fight to the finish. Leads off on Pac-12 Network. Utah Tech will be in Tucson. Utah at the Huntsman Center against Sam Houston. And California Baptist in Seattle. You can see UW the night cap. 14 lead changes. We're tied for the eighth time. See who can execute and make shots the last 743. The game's opened up a little, gotten a little better offensively both ways here late into the second half. Aaron Deloney passes off to Perry Smith Jr. Now takes it back to the block and kicked away. So a tie game USC basketball without Boogie Ellis. Uh, USC went back to their man-to-man -man on that possession out of the timeout. 
Dixon Waters will run the point. Peterson gets his back to the basket on the block. Goes to work. Separates and scores. Design play for Peterson. Get it back to the other side. He's got the side cleared to make his play. Got to the defender, turned his back, and made the shot. 11 points now on 12 shots for Drew Peterson. This is Robin Duncan. Deloney slash for the lead. Just getting ready to say, if SC could get a stop here and then score, make it a two-possession game, what does that do to Vermont? To Vermont? Because that's his largest lead of this right. has been three. They've, they've had the lead the whole game, Vermont, for the most part. Foul goes on Perry Smith Jr. and now John Becker's group over the limit. You know, one and one for Joshua Morgan. Not a great foul shooter, but this could be a path to victory for SC as well. well this one may come down to foul shooting too. Both teams in the bonus, last six and a half. Two big ones and confident strokes from Joshua wow. Morgan. Sixteen lead changes now. Sullivan takes the contact and converts. Good strong move from Sullivan. Take another look at that one. It looked like Morgan was vertical. It's almost like Sullivan hit him early, be, earlier before he got vertical. A big play there. Peterson facing up to the lane. Foul on the floor. The result will be a one and one. That's a four on Robin Duncan, though. Team starting to foul here. Mentioned it in the first half. Both teams were doing a good job at guarding without fouling. Now that this game's coming down to crunch time, players get into the line. Peterson throws a lot at you defensively, doesn't he? Yeah. Arms and angles and pivot feet. Hard not to foul. Dylan Penn is back, replacing Duncan with those four fouls. A couple of days off since, but Vermont, it's worth mentioning, played in a double overtime at Fullerton on Sunday. See how their conditioning holds up in this stretch run. They play a good amount of guys. I can't imagine conditioning would be an issue a couple days later, but let's see. Baloney has Peterson and now Morgan sends it away. Whoa. Sullivan from Figueroa. Peterson cleans it up. Smart move by Peterson here. Settle it. Let's have a good possession in the half court. Dixon Waters screening to get Peterson to the block. Second He's defender from out. the bottom. Morgan couldn't handle a beautiful pass. Those interior passes, OJB, especially with Biggs, they can't have a ton of mustard on them. You know, take a little off. Because Biggs are used to going up and getting it at the rim and dunking it. That pass had a little too much heat on it. Good idea. It would have worked. A little too hot to handle. Deloney tees up another three from Sullivan. 
defensive rebounding, rebounding has been solid for both programs. Now it's White's turn to screen for Drew. No second defender this time. Well defended until a late whistle. Sullivan thought he had done his part and said more free throws for Drew Peterson. Again, I go back to what I said in the first half, JB. There's no need to try and block this. It's going to be a tough shot no matter what, so why even get close enough to put them on the line? You're saying he'd already won their defense. Yeah. If he had made that one, that's the one you just tip your cap. Like, that's a tough shot. He makes it. But... He's going to miss that one more than he makes it. So no reason to foul him. Peterson continues to hammer away. Now 15 points he's taken over USC scoring lead. Well, if they win this game, it's going to be because of Peterson scoring and playmaking in the second half. Solomon sends it to the baseline. Catamounts put it in the hands of Deloney. Now Vareno, they just make the right pass. Didn't go down, but man, they make the right pass every time. Five of 23, 22% shooting from distance for Vermont. They clear out. Peterson, one more, finds Dixon Waters. Hornery on the weak side. And a foul in the Catamounts. Looks like Trey White will be the shooter. Well, if USC is attacking that glass, and they've got some extra possessions here and got some free throws out of it. A couple of housekeeping items on this foul on Aaron Deloney. Going underneath White, that's his fourth personal. It also is now a double bonus situation mm -hmm. for SC. Which is important in a two-point game with 4.05 to go. That's why he promptly misses the front end of what would have been a one-and-one. One. Deloney back to the bench. Just over four minutes to go. White and SC missing a chance to match or extend their largest lead of the game. Sullivan away from two defenders. Now on rotation. This is Dylan Penn. White moving his feet to stay in front. Too good from Dylan Penn. A pretty good defense, just better offense by Penn. He's recovered from a broken hand over the summer to be on the court early in the non-conference for Vermont. We'd be surprised if this was our last tie, Don, at 46 apiece. Peterson able to discard the defender. Morgan does the rest. And a flop technical on top of it, too. So a two-point advantage for USC and a free throw on the other side. Goes against Finn Sullivan and Vermont. That was whistled as a flop, which means in addition to this bucket from Morgan, a free throw for Reese Dixon Waters. That's that's I know referees don't factor in time and score, but that's not a good call to begin with, but really not a good call in a two-point game with 318 to go. That's just a no call. That's not a flop. Allows SC to match its largest lead at three. We've been tied 11 times, 19 times. The lead has changed hands. And cannot find a way around Trey White. So they whip it around the perimeter. You see, they don't force anything. They know they have clock still. They get that look. Fiorillo ties it up again. USC just can't get the lead to two possessions. Looks like they're gonna, and they just don't. Tied again. Great spin move with the left. Drew Peterson. SC back in front. And right read that time. Instead of getting contact with the defender, spun back around. Got himself an easy left-handed layup.
Fiorillo, not this time. Too open, pulled the string on that. You see that? As we approach the two-minute mark, an opportunity for USC to take its largest lead. They can get a bucket here, two possessions. Peterson with the ball and 17 points to lead the scores. Falling away. A foul. Again. And a bucket for Drew Peterson. Same play from a couple minutes ago. You got Peterson in a bad spot. Make him take the tough shot. So not only does he foul him, he doesn't foul him hard enough for him to miss. So now it becomes an and one mistake by Vermont. But credit Peterson, he has put a ton of a pressure on Vermont's defense down in that post all night, but especially here in the second half. You spoke with him pregame, Don. He takes a lot of ownership of the situation and this season for the USC Trojans, as evidenced by that C on his chest. Well, he told us it's a work in progress. The young guys are coming along, but he, I think he says tonight, I got to take this thing over if we're going to win. Push the lead out to five. Now they need some stops. 15 of Peterson's points have come here in the second half. Critical possession now for Finn Sullivan and the Catamounts. Guard without fouling. Beat him to the glass. Finn Sullivan. Timeout, Vermont. Assists. If we had his usage rate down, it would be extremely, yeah. extremely high. In that stoppage, Boogie Ellis back on the floor for this offensive possession, playing with four personal fouls. So much for that. Just go right back to Peterson. Why not? All the way across. Boogie. Big Bottom. shot. To double the lead. So it, I was kind of right. They went to Peterson, but it wasn't for him to score. It was for him to drag a second defender, find somebody opposite Boogie with a big time shot. Six point game again. Guard without foul. And you don't want the clock to stop if you're USC. All over the three point wow. line. Nonetheless, Sullivan finds daylight. Well, same game. Now you can take this out. There's a 23 second differential, 21 second differential. You can take this all the way down, but you still need a bucket because it's only a one possession game. Peterson rips through Sullivan to the corner. Boogie again dips in, has it blocked, puts it back up off the glass. Shot clock violation, Vermont. Gets the stop it had to have. Well, here's the question now. There's probably a little too much time, but up three, are you fouling their set and get this up at like 10 seconds? The other thing is if you don't get the offensive rebound, enough time to foul, but still have enough time after the foul and the free throws to get it back down again. Sullivan brings it up off the screen. Aaron Deloney with 12. Sullivan. Hoist. Could not hit. Loose ball. Rebound. Kobe Johnson has it. Just need one free throw now if you're USC. Good job by the USC defense. Making them take a tough shot. And then getting the rebound. Kind of from our angle. Looked like that shot was online, didn't it? As you pointed out, double bonus for Kobe Johnson and USC. Just need one. They trailed for much of the night. More than 20 minutes of this contest. Now maybe they're going to try and roll it, Vermont, make them pick it up, and then just leave them alone. Andy Enfield spends one of his three timeouts before they can shoot it down the floor. And USC is in position to get out of Galen Center at making both Kobe Johnson now, even if you did somehow foul a three-point shooter and it went in, you're still covered on that with a five-point lead. With 5.8, Dylan Penn to Finn Sullivan. Shoot it. 
Gets it back. Now Sullivan. Too much time taken. In the, air. the three goes down, but USC prevails. Good game. Wasn't a great offensive game, but turned out to be a good game down the stretch. And Drew Peterson was big time. Boogie Ellis, big three.